A parliamentary system is a system of democratic governance of a state where the executive derives its democratic legitimacy from its ability to command the confidence of the legislature, typically a parliament, and is also held accountable to that parliament. In a parliamentary system, the head of state is usually a person distinct from the head of government. This is in contrast to a presidential system, where the head of state often is also the head of government and, most importantly, the executive does not derive its democratic legitimacy from the legislature. Countries with parliamentary democracies may be constitutional monarchies, where a monarch is the head of state while the head of government is almost always a member of parliament such as the United Kingdom, Denmark, Sweden and Japan, or parliamentary republics, where a mostly ceremonial president is the head of state while the head of government is regularly from the legislature such as Ireland, Germany, India and Italy. In a few parliamentary republics, such as Botswana, South Africa, and Suriname, among some others, the head of government is also head of state, but is elected by and is answerable to parliament. In bicameral parliaments, the head of government is generally, though not always, a member of the lower house. Parliamentarianism is the dominant form of government in Europe, with 32 of its 50 sovereign states being parliamentarian. It is also common in the Caribbean, being the form of government of ten of its thirteen island states, and in Oceania. Elsewhere in the world, parliamentary countries are less common, but they are distributed through all continents, most often in former colonies of the British Empire. History since ancient times, when societies were tribal, there were councils or a headman whose decisions were assessed by village elders. Eventually, these councils have slowly evolved into the modern parliamentary system. The first parliaments date back to Europe in the Middle Ages in Greece, specifically in 1188 Alfonso IX, King of Leon Spain, convened the three states in the Cortes of Leon. An early example of parliamentary government developed in today's Netherlands and Belgium during the Dutch Revolt 1581, when the sovereign, legislative and executive powers were taken over by the States General of the Netherlands from the then monarch, King Philip II of Spain. The modern concept of parliamentary government emerged in the Kingdom of Great Britain between 1707–1800 and its contemporary, the parliamentary system in Sweden between 1721–1772. In England, Simone de Montfort is remembered as one of the fathers of representative government for holding two famous parliaments. The first, in 1258, stripped the king of unlimited authority and the second, in 1265, included ordinary citizens from the towns. Later, in the 17th century, the Parliament of England pioneered some of the ideas and systems of liberal democracy culminating in the Glorious Revolution and passage of the Bill of Rights 1689. In the Kingdom of Great Britain, the monarch, in theory, chaired cabinet and chose ministers. In practice, King George I's inability to speak English led the responsibility for chairing cabinet to go to the leading minister, literally the prime or first minister, Robert Walpole. The gradual democratization of Parliament with the broadening of the voting franchise increased Parliament's role in controlling government, and in deciding who the king could ask to form a government. By the 19th century, the Great Reform Act of 1832 led to parliamentary dominance, with its choice invariably deciding who was prime minister and the complexion of the government. Other countries gradually adopted what came to be called the Westminster model of government, with an executive answerable to Parliament, but exercising powers nominally vested in the head of state, in the name of the head of state. Hence the use of phrases like Her Majesty's government or His Excellency's government. Such a system became particularly prevalent in older British dominions, many of whom had their constitutions enacted by the British Parliament. Examples include Australia, New Zealand, Canada, the Irish Free State, and the Union of South Africa. Some of these parliaments evolved were reformed from, or were initially developed as distinct from their original British model. The Australian Senate, for instance, has since its inception more closely reflected the US Senate than the British House of Lords, whereas since 1950 there is no upper house in New Zealand. Democracy and parliamentarianism became increasingly prevalent in Europe in the years after World War I, partially imposed by the democratic victors, Great Britain and France, on the defeated countries and their successors, notably Germany's Weimar Republic and the new Austrian Republic. 19th century urbanization, the Industrial Revolution and, modernism had already fueled the political left. 
s struggle for democracy and parliamentarianism for a long time. In the radicalized times at the end of World War I, democratic reforms were often seen as a means to counter popular revolutionary currents. Characteristics A parliamentary system may be either bicameral, with two chambers of parliament or houses or unicameral, with just one parliamentary chamber. In the case of a bicameral parliament, this is usually characterized by an elected lower house that has the power to determine the executive government and an upper house which may be appointed or elected through a different mechanism from the lower house. Scholars of democracy such as Aaron Lilpart distinguish two types of parliamentary democracies, the Westminster and consensus systems. The Westminster system is usually found in the Commonwealth of Nations and countries which were influenced by the British political tradition. These parliaments tend to have a more adversarial style of debate and the plenary session of parliament is more important than committees. Some parliaments in this model are elected using a plurality voting system first past the post, such as the United Kingdom, Canada, and India, while others use proportional representation, such as Ireland and New Zealand. The Australian House of Representatives is elected using instant runoff voting, while the Senate is elected using proportional representation through single transferable vote. Regardless of which system is used, the voting systems tend to allow the voter to vote for a named candidate rather than a closed list. The Western European parliamentary model e Spain, Germany, tends to have a more consensual debating system and usually has semicircular debating chambers. Consensus systems have more of a tendency to use proportional representation with open party lists than the Westminster model legislatures. The committees of these parliaments tend to be more important than the plenary chamber. Some West European countries' parliaments e.g. in the Netherlands, Luxembourg and Sweden implement the principle of dualism as a form of separation of powers. In countries using this system, members of parliament have to resign their place in parliament upon being appointed or elected minister. Ministers in those countries usually actively participate in parliamentary debates, but, are not entitled to vote. Implementations of the parliamentary system can also differ on the manner of how the prime minister and government are appointed and as to whether the government needs the explicit approval of the parliament, rather than just the absence of its disapproval. Some countries such as India also require the prime minister to be a member of the legislature, though in other countries this only exists as a convention. The head of state appoints a prime minister who will likely have majority support in parliament. While in practice most prime ministers under the Westminster system including Australia, Canada, India, New Zealand and the United Kingdom are the leaders of the largest party in parliament, technically the appointment of the prime minister is a prerogative exercised by the monarch, the governor-general, or the president. No parliamentary vote takes place on who is forming a government, but since parliament can immediately defeat the government with a motion of no confidence, the head of state is limited by convention to choosing a candidate who can command the confidence of parliament, and thus has little or no influence in the decision. The head of state appoints a prime minister who must gain a vote of confidence within a set time. Examples, Italy, Thailand. The head of state appoints the leader of the political party holding a plurality of seats in parliament as prime minister. For example, in Greece, if no party has a majority, the leader of the party with a plurality of seats is given an exploratory mandate to receive the confidence of the parliament within three days. If this is not possible, then the leader of the party with the second highest seat number is given the exploratory mandate. If this fails, then the leader of the third largest party is given it and so on. The head of state nominates a candidate for prime minister who is then submitted to parliament for approval before appointment. Example, Spain, where the king sends a nomination to parliament for approval. Also, Germany where under the German basic law constitution the Bundestag votes on a candidate nominated by the federal president. In these cases, parliament can choose another candidate who then would be appointed by the head of state. Parliament nominates a candidate whom the head of state is constitutionally obliged to appoint as prime minister. Example, Japan, where the emperor appoints the prime minister on the nomination of the diet. Also, Ireland where the president of Ireland appoints the Taisha on the nomination of the Dale. A public officeholder other than the head of state or their representative nominates a candidate, who, if approved by parliament, is appointed as prime minister. 
Example, under the Swedish Instrument of Government 1974, the power to appoint someone to form a government has been moved from the monarch to the Speaker of Parliament and the Parliament itself. The Speaker nominates a candidate, who is then elected to Prime Minister Statsminister by the Parliament if an absolute majority of the members of Parliament does not vote no i.e. he can be elected even if more members of Parliament vote no than yes. Direct election by popular vote. Example, Israel, 1996-2001, where the Prime Minister was elected in a general election, with no regard to political affiliation, and whose procedure can also be described as of a semi-parliamentary system. Furthermore, there are variations as to what conditions exist if any, for the government to have the right to dissolve the parliament. In some countries, such as Denmark, Malaysia, Australia and New Zealand, the Prime Minister has the de facto power to call an election, at will. This was also the case in the United Kingdom until the passage of the Fixed Term Parliaments Act 2011. In Israel, Parliament may vote in order to call an election or pass a vote of no confidence against the government. Other countries only permit an election to be called in the event of a vote of no confidence against the government, a supermajority vote in favor of an early election or prolonged deadlock in Parliament. These requirements can still be circumvented. For example, in Germany in 2005, Gerhard Schroeder deliberately allowed his government to lose a confidence motion, in order to call an early election. In Sweden, the government may call a snap election at will, but the newly elected Riksdag is only elected to fill out the previous Riksdag's term. The last time this option was used was in 1958. Norway is unique among parliamentary systems in that the Storting always serves the whole of its four year term. The parliamentary system can be contrasted with a presidential system which operates under a stricter separation of powers, whereby the executive does not form part of nor is appointed by the parliamentary or legislative body. In such a system, parliaments or congresses do not select or dismiss heads of governments, and governments cannot request an early dissolution as may be the case for parliaments. There also exists the semi-presidential system that draws on both presidential systems and parliamentary systems by combining a powerful president with an executive responsible to parliament, for example, the French Fifth Republic. Parliamentarianism may also apply to regional and local governments. An example is the city of Oslo, which has an executive council as a part of the parliamentary system. A few parliamentary democratic nations such as India, Pakistan, and Bangladesh, have enacted an anti-defection law, which prohibits a member of the legislature from switching to another party after being elected. With this law, elected representatives lose their seats in parliament if they vote contrary to the directions of their party. <laughs> Advantages and disadvantages one of the commonly attributed advantages to parliamentary systems is that it is faster and easier to pass legislation, as the executive branch is formed by the direct or indirect support of the legislative branch and often includes members of the legislature. Thus the executive as the majority party or coalition of parties in the legislature has a majority of the votes and can pass legislation at will. In a presidential system, the executive is often chosen independently from the legislature. If the executive and the majority of the legislature are from different political parties, then stalemate can occur. Thus the executive might not be able to implement its legislative proposals. An executive in any system be it parliamentary, presidential or semi-presidential is chiefly voted into office on the basis of his or her party's platform, manifesto, and the same is also true of the legislature. In addition to quicker legislative action, a parliamentary government has attractive features for nations that are ethnically, racially, or ideologically divided. In a presidential system, all executive power is vested in one person, the president. In a parliamentary system, with a collegial executive, power is more divided. In the 1989 Lebanese Taif Agreement, in order to give Muslims greater political power, Lebanon moved from a semi-presidential system with a strong president to a system more structurally similar to classical parliamentary government. Iraq similarly disdained a presidential system out of fears that such a system would be tantamount to Shiite domination. Afghanistan's minorities refused to go along with a presidency as strong as the Pashtuns desired. It can also be argued that power is more evenly spread out in parliamentary government, as the government and prime minister do not have the ability to make unilateral decisions as the entire government cabinet is answerable and accountable to parliament. 
Parliamentary systems are less likely to allow celebrity-based politics to fully dominate a society unlike what often happens in presidential systems, where name recall and popularity can catapult a celebrity, actor, or popular politician to the presidency despite such candidates' lack of competence and experience. In his 1867 book The English Constitution, Walter Bagehot praised parliamentary governments for producing serious debates, for allowing for a change in power without an election, and for allowing elections at any time. Bagueho considered the four-year election rule of the United States to be unnatural, as it can potentially allow a president who has disappointed the public with a dismal performance in the second year of his term to continue on until the end of his four-year term. Under a parliamentary system, a prime minister that has lost support in the middle of his term can be easily replaced by his own peers. Some scholars like Juan Linz, Fred Riggs, Bruce Ackerman, and Robert Dahl have found that parliamentary government is less prone to authoritarian collapse. These scholars point out that since World War II, two-thirds of Third World countries establishing parliamentary governments successfully made the transition to democracy. By contrast, no Third World presidential system successfully made the transition to democracy without experiencing coups and other constitutional breakdowns. A recent World Bank study found that parliamentary systems are associated with less corruption. This study's findings are supported by a separate study that arrived at the same conclusions. Some constituencies may have a popular local candidate under an unpopular leader, or the reverse, forcing a difficult choice on the electorate. Mixed member proportional representation, where voters cast two votes, can make this choice easier by allowing voters to cast one vote for the local candidate at the constituency level but also cast a second vote for another party at the wider parliamentary level. Although Bagueho praised parliamentary governments for allowing an election to take place at any time, the lack of a definite election calendar can be abused. Previously under some systems, such as the British, a ruling party could schedule elections when it felt that it was likely to retain power, and so avoid elections at times of unpopularity. Election timing in the UK, however, is now partly fixed under the Fixed Term Parliaments Act 2011, thus, by a wise timing of elections, in a parliamentary system, a party can extend its rule for longer than is feasible in a functioning presidential system. This problem can be alleviated somewhat by setting fixed dates for parliamentary elections, as is the case in several of Australia's state parliaments. In other systems, such as the Dutch and the Belgian, the ruling party or coalition has some flexibility in determining the election date. Conversely, flexibility in the timing of parliamentary elections can avoid periods of legislative gridlock that can occur in a fixed-period presidential system. Such feature in being able to time elections whenever it is advantageous to the ruling party is not a real issue, however, as voters ultimately have the ability to still make the choice of whether to vote for the ruling party or not. It has been well observed that the rankings of top performing countries according to performance indices such as list of countries by GDP nominal per capita, human development index, global competitiveness report, corruption perceptions index, and many more performance indexes feature most best performing countries having parliamentary systems, while most worst performing countries have presidential systems or strong president semi-presidential systems. This also extends to the fact that majority, if not all, of the countries that dominate top ranks of lists like the Global Livability Ranking, the Mercer Quality of Living Survey, the Henley Passport Index, and many such ranking lists use parliamentary systems. In contrast, the list of cities by murder rate shows an overwhelming number of cities found in countries that use presidential systems. Topic. Countries. Topic. Topic. Africa. Topic. Topic. Americas. Topic. Topic. Asia. Topic. Topic. Europe Topic Topic Oceania Topic Topic See also Topic Parliamentary Republic Semi-parliamentary system 
Semi-presidential system Presidential system List of countries by system of government List of legislatures by country Parliament in the making Parliamentary leader Rule according to higher law Rule of law Law reform References External links Topic.